you know, bring the punishment. Ma You know, what, what is what is what is what is keeping you from bringing the punishment? Just imagine this. You know, the Prophet is trying to save these people. The Prophet is trying to guide these people and say, okay, then bring it. If you're if you're such a truthful person, if you've not made this whole Quran up, if you're not lying about what, where you've got this revelation, bring the bring the adab now. We're waiting. Bring it here. Here we are. Where is your adab? You know, but the, the, the pun, bringing the punishment is not it is not the role of the messengers. Allah only sent the messengers as mubashirin and mundirin, as givers of glad tidings and as people who won. This is the role of the messengers. This is the role of the messengers. وَيُجَادِلُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالْبَاطِلِ لِيُدْحِضُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ وَاتَّخَذُوا آيَاتِ وَمَا أُنْذِرُوا But those who disbelieve dispute with falsehood بالباطل. they dispute لِيُدْحِضُوا بِهِ الْحَقِّ to, to, to refute the haq to uh, make the haq to make the truth void to weaken the truth basically and they take our verses they take our signs and what we warn them with as in mockery they, they mock them they take it in jest so they, they laugh at these verses they laugh at the war the, the rusul uh, and the quran says that we never send any messenger except that these people they always mock these people you know nuh salam was mocked you know, Musa alayhi salam, all these people were mocked. You know, that the, this, this is actually the, the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when you, like for example, Fir'aun, uh, when Musa alayhi salam came to him and talked and said, you know, um, uh, called him to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he turned to Haman and he said to Haman, build me a lofty tower, sarha, build me a, 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 a huge sarha, a, 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 a lofty tower. I want to climb this tower and I want to uh, look into the heavens and I want to see the God of Musa you know so this was you know this was the uh, uh, this was the, uh, the the mockery of Fir'aun basically and the arrogance of Fir'aun it says okay if Musa is so right that his, his his God is in the heavens build me this huge tower Haman make me so I'm going to climb it and I'm going to look into the heavens I'm going to look into the side where see where his God is um, and in Surah An-Nahl verse 35 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ أَشْرَكُوا لَوْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ مَا عَبَدْنَا مِن دُونِهِ مِن شَيْءٍ نَحْنُ وَلَا آبَاؤُنَا وَلَا حَرَّمْنَا مِن دُونِهِ مِن شَيْءٍ كَذَلِكَ فَعَلَ الَّذِينَ مِن قَبْلِهِمْ فَهَلْ عَلَى الرُّسُلِ إِلَّا الْبَلَاغُ الْمُبِينَ That those who, um, those who uh, associate with Allah, those who do shirk They say, if Allah willed, if Allah wanted us, we would have believed he would have, uh, we would never have um, uh, worshipped other beings. If Allah had really willed for us to believe, He would have made us believe. نحن ولا آباؤنا We would not have associated, neither would have our forefathers. And we would have not prescribed prohibitions other than His. كذلك فعل So did those who went before them, they said the same thing. فهل على الرسول إلا البلاغ المبين but what is the message? What is the mission of the messengers? But to preach the clear message. But to preach. The, so the, again, the messengers, the messengers cannot force people. The messengers cannot, uh, you know, uh, uh, impose any any of these things. It is up to people if they want to believe and if they want to dispute, if they want to have um, pride and they want to deny, then it's, then it is up to them. <coughs> but. وَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ مِنْ مَنْ ذُكِّرَ بِآيَاتِ رَبِّهِ فَأَعْرَضَ عَنْهَا وَنَسْيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَاهُ إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا عَلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ أَكِنَّةً أَنْ يَفْقَهُوهُ وَفِي آذَانِهِمْ وَقَرَى وَإِنْ تَدْعُهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى فَلَنْ يَهْدَدُوا إِذًا أَبَدًا And who does more wrong? Who is more unjust? Than the one who is reminded of the signs of his Lord but turns away from them. Forgetting what he has done, forgetting the deeds that he has committed, which his hands have sent forth. Indeed, we have placed veils over their hearts, veils over their minds, lest they should understand this. And over their ears, deafness. And if you call them to guidance, they will never believe. فَلَنْ يَهْتَدُوا إِذًا أَبَدًا They will never believe. So the Qur'an says this is the greatest oppression. The greatest oppression is to oppress yourself, is to oppress your own body, is to oppress your own soul, 
and to oppress your own faculties. This is, this is the greatest oppression. You have something and you oppress your own self. This is the most strange of oppressions anyway. And this is, and this is done. And this oppression, this oppression of the self is by rejecting Allah's signs. When Allah's signs are recited to you, you turn away. You turn your back. You ignore. You forget. You don't, you don't interact with his signs. And in fact, you refuse his signs. This is a great, great oppression. And the other part of this um, oppression of oneself is to ignore the things that you've done. Is not to think about the consequences of your actions. Is to forget about that. وَنَسِيَ مَا قَدَّمَتْ يَدَى That he forgets. This person forgets what they have done. They, this person forgets the consequences of what will happen on the day of judgment. So imagine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your Lord is trying to bring you out of safety. He's trying to bring you to a place where you'll be safe from danger and to bring you to a place of refuge and you throw yourself into danger. This is what it's like. Allah is trying to save you. Allah is through His mercy, through His guidance, through His signs, through His <coughs> rusul, through His kutub, through His books, through, through, through His guidance to you, through, his, through everything He's created. He's trying to day and night bring you to Him and you're refusing and you're plunging yourself into a fire. You're plunging yourself into a chasm or to an abyss or to some dangerous place. This is, this is the dhulm, this is the dhulm, this is a great, great dhulm. And this is why the Prophet ﷺ said that I to you, I am to you as someone who is at the edge of a cliff and you're trying to jump off the cliff and I'm holding you by your waist and trying to hold you back. I'm trying to hold you back. So people, humanity is at the precipice. Humanity is at the edge of the abyss of Jahannam and the Prophet is standing there as the messenger, as the Rasul, as the Nabi, and the, the Nabi of Rahmah, and he is grabbing people by the waist and stopping them from falling. This is this is the this is what the Prophet and the Prophet said to Quraysh, he said, and he stood up in front of Quraysh, he said, Ida akhbartukum anna al aduwa musabbihakum, anna al aduwa musabbihukum ghada. If I was to tell you that the, that the adu, that your enemy was to come in the morning, musabbihukum, that he was to spring upon you, ambush you, and he's behind this hill, akuntu musaddiqiyya, were you, were you, will you believe me? Would you believe me? And they said, Quraysh said, this was before he, he announced the message, ma jarrabna alayka kathiba, we have not seen from you a kathib. We have not seen from you any lie. You are sadiq, you are ameen, you are the trustworthy. We, you've never lied to us. فَقَالَ فَإِنِّي نَذِيرٌ لَكُمْ بَيْنَ عَذَابٍ شديد. That I, therefore, so, listen to me. I am to you a clear warner. A clear warner from an adab shadid, a, 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 a painful, a severe torment, a, a severe punishment. So these people, when the signs of Allah and the verses of the Qur'an are recited and they turn their backs. So you can imagine the Prophet ﷺ in Mecca reciting to them, calling them, sitting around with them in circles, calling to them, you know, reciting the Qur'an, trying to guide them. And these people are, uh, are, are, are turning away. These people are rejecting uh, this, uh, this message. And in another... And, and, yeah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this verse that we have placed a veil over their hearts or their minds. The word qalb in, in, in the Quran is used for both the heart and the mind. Because both the heart and the mind are receptacles of, uh, of knowledge. And in fact, you know, this, this, is, this is very true actually. What, what modern science says about the mind only being the receptacle of thinking is, is not true because they found... Uh, you know, um, they found uh, they found neurons in, 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 in the heart, and you know, and also in the gut lining, actually. So a lot of this, a lot of this, um, this whole system is involved in, in, in thinking, and it is it is the receptacle of knowledge. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has placed a veil over their hearts, and He has uh, so, uh, less uh, so that they don't understand the Quran, so that they don't understand the Quran, and they, He's placed deafness, waqar. Waqar is kind of a deafness in their ears, so they don't hear. They hear, but they don't hear. You know, they, uh, they see, but they don't see type of thing. And this, um, this tells us that if Allah wants to turn your heart away from guidance, there is no hope. So we should really be very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
that he has decided to guide us because without his will we would never believe if Allah did not want any one of us to believe in this room we would never have believed it is purely through the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this message and this message sits comfortably in our hearts but there's no guarantee that we will die as believers there's absolutely no guarantee for that and this is why the dua of Yusuf was at the end Ya Fatir al-Samawati wal-Ard Anta wali fi dunya wal-Akhira Tawaffani musliman wal-Hiqani bis-Salim Make me die as a Muslim and join me with the Salihin and this is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's dua used to be Ya Muqallib al-Qulub Thabbit qalbi ala deenik and also in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud the hadith says that one of you does the actions of the people of paradise until that is that there is between him or between her and paradise only a hand span or an arm's length and then the book takes over the book takes over and then you start to do the actions of the people of jahannam and then that person enters jahannam so it's it's that this people can do the actions of the people of paradise all through their lives and at the end Allah's decree takes over and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's book books book takes over and these people start to do the, the actions of the people of hell just before they die and they die upon that and so this is something that we should uh, be very very aware of and this is why actually um, Sufyan al-Thawri Sufyan al-Thawri the great Imam the great Muhaddith and the great Faqih from Iraq from Kufa um, he, when he was um, when he was on his deathbed, he was extremely scared. He was extremely frightened. And people, you know, they were visiting when they were saying, "Ya Sufyan, O oh, Sufyan, are you scared because of your sins?" He says, "No, I'm not scared of my sins." He says, "I'm not scared of my sins because I didn't, I, you know, I, I'm not scared of them because I didn't sin." Lakinni akhafu an uslab al iman. That I am afraid that Iman might be taken from my heart. I'm afraid that Iman might be taken from my heart. And this is why Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi, his student, came. He was the only one that could uh, make him feel better. And he said, Oh, Sufyan, if, 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 if you had a choice between Allah judging you on the day of judgment or your mother, which one would you choose? What did he say? Did he say his mother? No, he didn't say his mother. He said, Allah. Allah, I would prefer Allah. And then he came a bit calm. He became calm. He was, he, was ex he was so scared. Maybe he was trembling in, you know, something like this. But then he became calmer. You know, so Abdurrahman said, uh, Abdurrahman ibn Mahdi. So these people, these early people used to be very, very scared of this issue. That, that, that Iman can be taken from our hearts. And it's because of the, the Rahmah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we have this Iman. And actually just, I found, I, I was looking through the Quran for a, for a, a similar verse and I found this verse in Surah Al-Fusilat verse 5 Surah 41 وَقَالُوا They say قُلُوبُنَا فِي أَكِنَّةٍ That our hearts have a veil over them مِمَّا تَدْعُونَا تَدْعُونَا إِلَيْهِ From what you call, to, uh, call us to وَفِي آذَانِنَا وَقَرْ And in our, in our ears is a deafness They are saying it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not saying it here They are saying it The Mushrikun are saying this They themselves are saying وَمِن بَيْنِنَا وَبَيْنِكَ عِجَابٍ and between us and you, there's a wall. There's a hijab. You know, they're mocking the Prophet What do you say? Well, they're saying that when you speak, we're deaf. Right? When you say anything, our hearts are... We, we don't... You do what you want, we'll do what we want. We'll do what we want. So they're the ones who said this. <coughs> so perhaps it was because of this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed these things over them. Maybe, I don't know. But I saw this and I, and, I, and I thought this was very, very interesting. That they are the ones who said it. They are the ones who said, you, they're mocking the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They say, you speak with death. And this is why, you know, in Surah Nuh, Surah Nuh, they, they, they say, was, you know, uh, they, they place that, They place whenever you spoke to them. Just imagine you're speaking to somebody face to face and you're trying to do something good for them. And, they, and, he, and that person does this and, you, and he's, you know, as you're speaking. Or they cover that, and as you walk by, what they, all these people, what they do, they cover their faces, you know, with their clothes, with their cloth, with their cloths, with their, with their garments. You know how to, hum to humiliate, very humiliating, isn't it? If somebody, you know, you walk past somebody and he basically covers his face until you walk past and then he uncovers it. This is what, this is the mockery of the, you know, actually we should think, 
we should think that if we're not being mocked, then are we doing our job? Because the Quran says that all the Rusul were mocked. All of them were mocked. And in fact, when you're mocked, then you know something's going right actually. It's when you're mocked, you, the, you must be mocked. If you are a da'i, if you are a Rasul, if you are a messenger of the messenger, if you are somebody who not, doesn't just keep this religion selfishly to yourself, and you call people and you warn people, and this is our job. Many, many verses like this. Then you must, if, if we have this attitude to people around us, then we must face this. But today we are not, we're not, we're not anywhere near that. وَإِن تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَى الْهُدَى فَلَنْ يَهْتَدُوا إِذًا أَبَدًا And if you ask them, if you call them to guidance, they will never, they will never be guided. Because, because of this arrogance, because of this mocking, this mockery, they've reached a point where they will now not believe in you, O Muhammad. So remember this surah, Surah Al-Kahf, is revealed at the very last stages of Mecca. The very last stages of Mecca before the pilgrimage. So the Quran is now saying to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam They've reached the stage and you've reached the stage where things have become very clear And these people are not going to accept your message So again Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala wants us to call people Until it becomes very clear who will believe and who will not And unfortunately we're at a stage where we've not even started da'wah we're, at, we're not even in year one of Mecca We're in year zero of Mecca and We've not even started to call people uh, وَرَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ بَلْ لَهُمْ مَوْعِدُ لَنْ يَجِدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ مَوْئِلًا But your Lord, رَبُّكَ الْغَفُورُ ذُو الرَّحْمَةِ Your Lord is غفور Your Lord is all forgiving And your Lord is ذو رحمة He's merciful You know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful He forgives those who come to him if you come to Allah, He will forgive you. You know, whatever people have done, whatever they've done, whatever the evil, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will always come um, forgive people. And this is why in Tirmidhi, in a hadith which Tirmidhi has said is Hassan, on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ibn Adam, innaka ma da'awtani wa rajawtani ghafartu laka ala ma kana minka wa la ubali. O son of Adam, as long as you call upon me, and keep hope in me. I will forgive all your sins. I do not care. Yabn Adam, Law Balagat Dhubuka Anana Samai Thumastartani Ghafar Tulaka. O son of Adam, if your sins were so numerous that they were to reach the sky, then you turn to me seeking forgiveness, I will forgive you. Yabna Adam, in Nakalaw Ataitani, Bikarabil Abdi Khataya, Thumma Lakitani La. لا تشرك بي شيئا لا أتيتك بقراب بقرابها مغفرة أو سنة بعد were you to come to me with an earth full of sins and were you then to face me having done no shirk having not ascribed any partners to me I will bring you a forgiveness as great as that so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a Rahman he is a Dhu Rahma he is a Ghafoor he is a Ghafar so after having said this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed these things over their hearts but Allah is merciful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. لَوْ يُؤَاخِذُهُمْ بِمَا كَسَبُوا If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was to take them, was to punish them for what they've done, بِمَا كَسَبُوا for the sins that they've done, لَعَجَّلَ لَهُمُ الْعَذَابِ He would have hastened the punishment upon these people. So it is out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He doesn't hasten them. He gives them a chance. He still gives them people a chance. He still gives them time. Even though there's you know, what they've done in, in all, for all of these 13 years and they've driven the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam out, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala still gives people a chance so that they might return. Rather, they have a, an appointed time from which there is no refuge. So they deserve to be punished now, but Allah still gives them mercy. وَتَلْكَ الْقُرَى أَهْلَكْنَاهُمْ لَمَّا ظَلَمُوا وَجَعَلْنَا لِمَهْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا and those are the towns, those are the cities which we destroyed. Lamma ظَلَمُوا when they when they oppressed, when they did dhulm. وَجَعَلْنَا لِمَهْلِكِهِمْ مَوْعِدًا and we have fixed an appointed time 
for the destruction. Tilk al Qura, the Quran says those those towns because the Arabs know which towns the Quran is, is talking about. These are the towns of Ad, the people of Thamud, the people of Median. The Arabs knew about Fir'aun and his people. Some of them also might have known about Qawm Lut. So these are the people. So Tilk al Qura ahlaknahum. So the Quran is reminding them that we did destroy. Don't think that the Adab will come. Just because you're asking for it now and it doesn't come now, it will come. You know that these, these towns were destroyed. <clears throat> and all of these towns, uh, uh, towns had an appointed time and were all destroyed due to their dhulm. And dhulm, dhulm in this context is takdeeb and kufr. Dhulm is when a messenger comes, a messenger comes and the people reject the, the signs of the messenger. The people deny and belay the message. This is the this is the the, the context of dhulm. And um, you know sometimes people um, use this verse uh, in Surah uh, Al-Hud. Maybe وَمَا كَانَ رَبُّكَ لِيُهْلِكَ الْقُرَى وَأَهْلُهَا بِظُلْمٍ وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ وَأَهْلُهَا مُصْلِحُونَ Some people say you know that this means that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will not destroy a nation and if its people do justice amongst themselves you may have heard this but this you know this this doesn't fit with the quran this doesn't fit with the quran the, the quran very clearly if you if you look through the quran in similar verses and surah al-a'raf i think the surah al-a'raf makes it makes this very very clear that the the, the salah that this that this verse is talking about the islah that this verse is talking about is what is opposite opposite to dhulm and and dhulm is always takdeeb this is the greatest dhulm when a messenger comes and you reject and you turn away from his signs. So we, so brothers and sisters, we should um, um, we should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us iman, that he has given us um, faith. You didn't, he didn't have to give us faith. It would have been his, his justice not to have given us faith, but it's his mercy, through his mercy that we are people who believe. But this, 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 this uh, favor also necessitates from us that we also have mercy upon other people and that we go and we, our neighbors and our colleagues and, and, and people we come across in this country we need to have it at the back of our minds that they need to be told they need to be told and this is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is these are the people who are muslihun these are the people who are muslihun those who have salah and do islah and islah is when you call other people to the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we'll finish it there but just before, uh, we have, we've only got a few minutes, I was asked to, uh, you know, um, say a few things about charity, uh, or maybe to pick a few verses about charity, but uh, we didn't have time in the end, and since it's charity week. You know, cha charity is really one of the um, most important parts of our religion. You know, whenever you see, one of the amazing things about the Quran is that in the vast majority of instances where Salah comes, and you know Salah, Salah is the most important part of our religion. You know, it's the Salah is the Imad al deen as the Prophet sallallahu alaihi is the pillar of the religion. You know, the Salah is the best action that, that you can do. When the Prophet was asked, ما أحب العمال إلى الله, he said, as Salah, as Salah, as Salah to in another in another narration. So Salah is the greatest act. But whenever we see Salah, or the vast majority of times we see Salah in the Quran, we see Zakah straight after. So Zakah being an obligatory charity, but also all forms of charity, all forms of charity really is, uh, is a huge, huge thing. And, and the rewards for charity are, are huge. The rewards for charity really are, you know, and, and the Prophet Sallallahu said that on the Day of Judgment, people will see the fire on their right and on their left and in, and in front of them. So, so protect yourselves from the fire, even if it's with half a date. Even if it's with half a date. So half a date can protect you. And he said in the same hadith that people will be in the shade of their charity, in the sh in the shade of their charity until the, the, the end of the judgment. So just imagine charity can shade us. Charity can be a a, 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 a dhil for us. And also many ways, subhanAllah, this you know charity can we can go on and on. But the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Dawu madhaqum bi sadaqa." He said, "Cure your ill with sadaqa. Cure your ill with sadaqa. Give sadaqa for your ill." And some people say that the best sadaqa for, for this is is to is to is to make blood flow, is to sacrifice a sheep or to sacrifice a cow or a camel, but to do udhiya. Now this is a really really good form of charity, especially for uh, 
for 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 um, uh, for for health and for for curing of illness. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "مثل الذين ينفقون في سبيل الله كمثل حبة نبتت سناب سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة سنبلة مئة حبة." That the likeness of those who spend in the way of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is like a grain, like a seed, from which grows. Uh, seven corns, seven ears of corn, in each ear of corn a hundred seeds. And then it carries on of course. You know, so seven hundred times and even more and more and more. You know, and really, you know, when, whenever, you know, ma naqasa malun min sadaqa, you know, uh, sadaqa never decreases your wealth. You know, no one thing, sadaqa never decreases your wealth. You give and then it comes back to you. You know, somebody said to me just uh, a couple of days ago that they saw an Islam channel, I think he saw, saw it himself, but he said on an Islam channel about two years ago, he said there was an appeal, it must have been for Syria, I think he mentioned, and uh, uh, somebody phoned in and he said, you know, for five years I've been saving up to go to Hajj. For five years I've been saving and I've got my money now, but I give my money to, to, um, to, 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 to this cause. And so he gave his money. And a couple of minutes later somebody else brings in and he says, I'm an agent for Hajj. I'm a travel agent, so I do Hajj and I want to donate to Hajj for this money. So you know, so you see, so you know, you, um, and actually um, a story that my, my, my wife told me, you know, that, uh, and I know this sister as well, in, in, uh, she lives in Birmingham, she, she told my wife that um, she was paying her zakah, I sure she calculated a zakah for the year, um, she calculated it, and uh, you know, she wanted to pay to one of these charities online, and she said as soon as she pressed go, the enter button, she heard a noise downstairs, she heard a noise. And she heard something came through the post box. And so she ran downstairs and the postman had come and there was a letter and she opened the letter and there was in the letter a check. There was a check. And basically she had a refund from some scam or some fraud that had been done. You know, some insurance, you know, something had been done. And she said, to the penny, exactly what I gave came back. To the penny, the, the check. And oh, I know this, I know this person. So you see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, sometimes it's like that. Sometimes Allah shows us for whatever reason it's like that. But it doesn't always have to be like that. Maybe you'll become healthy. Maybe you won't have a, you know, something bad might not happen to you. You know, it's anything. And maybe you'll be more successful in a job. Maybe you'll, Allah will give you a certain career. We don't know. Uh, but Allah likes to hide these things from us. Allah, because Allah doesn't want us to become arrogant. Because if, he, if we saw the rewards of our, our charity and the rewards of our goodies, we'd, become, we'd all become arrogant. You know, we think, all oh, these mountains are here. I don't need to do anything. Khalas, I rest. Allah doesn't want us to rest. Allah wants us to have more reward. So through His mercy, he, he hides these things from us. But sometimes He gives us these stories, you know, so that we know. So, you know, charity really is a, a, an important part. And a believer can never be one who is... A believer is always somebody that, that digs that digs deep and gives. You know, and... and um, uh, you know, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, he said, uh, he said, سبق, سبق He said, one dirham can be more than 100,000 dirhams. Why? Why? Maybe because of sincerity, but because if you give out of poverty, when you give, when you know one person who's only got two dirhams and they give one, and they give one that's a big big thing but somebody's got a million dirhams and they give a hundred thousand that's less so you know it depends on who you are it depends on who you are you know so you know the, these things you know Aisha radiallahu anha and you know subhanAllah the read the biography of Aisha reading an amazing sahabi, sahabi sahabiya an amazing sahabiya she Abdullah ibn Zubayr once sent her one hundred thousand dirhams one hundred thousand silver coins just imagine that and they needed big containers to carry them to her Abdullah ibn, ibn, ibn Zubayr sent this to her and she basically began to distribute these and it had not the, the, by, by the end of the day all of this money had been distributed all of this money and 100,000 dirhams is probably a million or something more than that millions of pounds you know a um, lot of money so you know the, the, these were the people of Aisha, and then and then she said to her Jaria, uh, you know maybe her, uh, her slave girl or her you know maybe a, a small girl, you know Ya Jaria Faturi, 
know, bring my fatur, bring my, uh, bring my, she was fasting. And we know that Aisha was one of the early people, and there were many early people who used to fast the whole year. They used to fast and only break on the two Eids. Every day they used to fast. And this, this was Aisha radiallahu anha. And uh, her, her slave girl, you know, told her off and she said, you know, now you say, couldn't you have saved even one dirham so that we could buy some lahan, so we could buy some food? And she said, you know, you could have, you should, la tu'annifini. Don't, don't be harsh on me. You know, if you had told me, I would have kept one dirham. You know, so, you know, these, you know, these, um, th- th- there are many, many stories anyway. But, but, um, sadaqah really is, uh, is, is one of the things that is, is one of the great characteristics of the believer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always, uh, always protects people from, be- because of sadaqah. And it will always come back. It will always come back in this life before it comes back in the next life. So never, never think that because I've given. And in fact, if you're struggling, that is the time to give. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers people in their heart. When, when you remember Allah, when your times are easy, then Allah rem- remembers you when your times are hard. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remembers you when. So remember Allah now. When times are easy, when we're here, when we've got everything. You know, when we've got food, when we're having three meals. You know, where there's, no, there's nothing happening. There's no war going, raging outside. There's no oppression raging outside. We're all, alhamdulillah, here, comfortable. None of us can, be, can claim to be, you know, um, dying from thirst or dying from hunger. Nobody here is like that. You know, so, you know, um, so inshallah, you know, I just wanted to say a few things. They, they asked me to say a few things. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, uh, to accept from us all, inshallah. Any, if there's any questions, please ask. Sorry, just for the questions, uh, this announcement is particularly for the brothers. Uh, we have a few spots left for uh, the Dawah stall next week. Because next week is community week. Uh, we have leaflets for you to see more details on that. Uh, so there are still a few more spots for the Dawah stall for the brothers. If you're interested, you can come and meet me after this. I'll take down your email address and your contact number and I'll tell you about the steps after that. Yes. In the charity, I, I remember one quotation of Mother Tukma. Uh, if you give the bell or water or food, at the day of judgment, uh, I don't know what about you were, if you were naked, you got with naked. If you give close to uh, the open food. You have been you have been naked without being naked. Without being on the day of judgment. You have been thirsty without being thirsty. The day of judgment. So, yeah. so one of the people of the of the shade, the seven people who will receive the shade of Allah on the day of judgment, uh, will be a person who gives with his right hand and his left doesn't know. You know, so you, when you give with your right hand, subhanAllah, you can be you can just just imagine it. You can just go now and give with the right nobody knows. And inshallah if Allah accepts from us. And uh, you know our money is halal. Subhanallah, you know, amazing. In the quotation of Allah Ta'ala, that is not regarding charity. How much little is that? It's always been, you know. Uh, don't think about the more. Uh, I mean, if it's little, the charity is something like one penny. It's, uh, it's always been. You know, yeah, no, it doesn't, matter, it doesn't matter how much it is, it doesn't matter how, so it's about who you, how much you can afford, it's about how much you have, so you know, one penny is, that's why walaw bi shakti tamra, even if it's half a day, and if I give you half a day, it's not much is it, but you can protect yourself from the fire before half, with half a day, imagine half a day, to protect yourself from the fire. So you said, or the ayah said that, Said that yeah, uh, not that. Uh, there was a story among the Sahaba who said that uh, he, he was worried that a man would be taken from his heart. Yes. He was worried that a man might one day be taken from his heart. Yeah, so now, yeah. Well, let me say that you know, Alhamdulillah, Allah has granted us Iman. Yeah, we always have to be grateful to Allah that Allah has granted us Now, when, when, when that Sahaba was worried about a man being taken away from his heart, do you mean like in a literal sense, like he could wake up tomorrow and have another man, or is it that? By the will of Allah, he could do certain action. Yeah, it could be. It, it could be in I, I, either way. It could be either way because there are there are occasions, you know, and we know when the Dajjal comes, somebody will wake up a believer and will go to sleep a, a disbeliever. So it can literally happen, you know. I mean, obviously, Allah's the way Allah's world works is there are causes. 
know, there are causes and all that. The way the, that's the way the world works. You know, but Allah can do anything anyway. But yeah, usually it's it's that you something happens to you and then you become ungrateful or something like that. You know, something Allah misguides through things. You know, and guides through things. You know, Allah guides people through difficulties. Allah guides. You know, how did um, how did Yusuf Islam? What's the story? Do you remember Yusuf Islam's story? Well, this is an example that came to my mind. Huh? He was like drowning. Yeah. He was drowning, yeah. And then he said, "Allah, if you save me, you know, I, you know, you know." So Allah guides people through things. That's the way of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So yes, you know, it can't happen just like that as well. If Allah wanted to, but um, literally, he was dying. He was on his deathbed, Sufyan. You know, maybe he had a few moments when he was still afraid that within those few moments he would. And he was literally shivering. Like I, I, it was. It didn't say shivering, but I just imagined he was. That scared he was, you know, terrified. He was terrified. Because these people really had the knowledge. They really understood. How do you prevent that then? Sorry? How do you prevent against? How do you prevent? Yeah, yeah. Oh, very good question. Yeah. <laughs> very, <laughs> very good question. <laughs> it's very, because you should do a lot of dua, you know, and actually the scholars say that if you're sincere, then inshallah Allah will keep, keep your sincerity to the end. So sincerity is a very important thing for that. Sincerity. And fear is also good. When you're very afraid of this, Allah will, Allah will. That's why they say, you know, uh, those who are fearful today will be safe tomorrow, and those who feel safe today will be fa- will be fearful tomorrow. So you know, Sufyan was a very fearful man. So to have fear in your hearts, you know, not easy, not easy because you have to think, you have to keep on thinking because it's not easy to think. Is it to sit down and to stop and then to just really force yourself to think? It's but you have to force yourself to think and uh, sincerity and fear, and then dua like Yusuf said, yeah. Go back to the point about Dawah, you mentioned the verses and it's sort of brought it. You know, when, when the believers have, uh, sorry, the non believers have uh, kibbutz in their heart, and it's a fist that I've there. So, is that indicating that if someone has, uh, so if you're arguing with somebody and you know, they have kibbutz, you know, fist that does that indicate you just not approach them at all or just approach them in a, in a different way? Fist billah. You know, what I'm saying? billah means go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because. I mean, Allah, well, I, I, didn't, I didn't read the tafsir of this verse, I didn't study it, but um, <coughs> it could mean, you know, seek refuge from their harm in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because when people have kibbutz, they can become very humiliating. And because, because, you know, sometimes you, you see people and, and you kind of argue with them day after day after day, and it's just not getting anywhere. So I'm trying to say, like, is, it, is it in, in a situation where you know somebody is kind of fixing his ideas? Yeah, they need them. Arrogance is no, is it need them? Then leave them. Yeah, once you've made it clear, because our, our goal, our, our aim is not to force people. If it's become clear and it's become clear that they're arrogant, then there's no point now. Right now, you're allowed to leave these people. Then you're allowed. To, then you should move on because there are other people who might be more sincere. There's no point wasting time with these people. So it's a, it's a waste of time actually with people who are arrogant. You, know, you can try once or twice. You know, if, if they're still arrogant, leave them. Go to the, that's what Allah accepts. And if if, if uh, the verse of the says you know. Yeah. So when people they do that when on the spot or, or you know they are very keen for the person to say the shahada, for example, you yeah. say that's that's they're, they're being overly. Uh, yeah, people should people should be overly enthusiastic because this is what the Prophet Sallallahu was. He was basically um, reproached by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. فَلَعَلَّكَ بَاقِيُ النَّفْسَكَ عَلَى أَثَارِ مِلُوكِ الْحُدُودِ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ أَسَفَ. So he was reproached. Uh, so we shouldn't be over enthusiastic. The dawah should have a dignity. There's a dignity to it. We're not. We're not missionaries. Yeah. We're not missionaries. We buy people's iman. You know, we will we'll lie to people. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll make things up. We're not like that. And also, we should be careful because we should tell people properly what, what they should understand. It's not about just quickly making say la ilaha and the next day he's. Because that's worse then. You know, next day you wait, you, you say la ilaha tonight and then tomorrow, oh, actually, I made a big mistake. Make people think properly. You know, iman should be that. Iman, then they should say, you know, actually, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, to say that is part of Islam. You know that because one of the is one of the pillars is one of the five pillars to say it is, but that's Islam. But Islam comes after iman. But if you're just doing jumping to Islam without the iman, that's wrong. So many times people today, yes, you know this whole new kind of uh, new age dawah kind of uh, surge, you know, street dawah and things like this, you know, you know, and there's this video about dawah man. You know, I've seen this this person dawah man. You know, not very good actually. Not very good. Very bad. It's, Demeaning the, 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 you know, it's not the way these things should be done. The dawah needs to be dignified and the dawah has an order. The dawah, you know, has a, has, a, has a fiqh. It's not the fiqh of dawah. You have to have knowledge when you're doing dawah. 
you have to know what the Quran tells you to say when they say don't do this فَاسْتَعِذْ بِاللَّهِ you, know, you have to have a fiqh you know say this to them if they say this you know, we, we, we don't know today we're just you know make, proving and putting on YouTube so you get a million hits that's not da'wah da'wah is sincere da'wah is care da'wah is love da'wah is knowledge da'wah is all of these things so it's very very important that you know um, so yeah, so Iman should be there for people, you know, and Iman needs thought. These people should understand why they... they so you do that and you leave them to... to yeah. So they are poor, they, and, and then once they're strong enough, then maybe they'll approach yeah. you or... Yeah, yeah, well, so I mean, I'm not saying you can't get them to do Shahada, I'm not saying that, but what I'm saying is that mm-hmm. the goal isn't the Shahada. Yeah. People make the Shahada the goal. It's, it's not, it's the goal isn't it? Eight minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes, eight no, yeah. it, can, it can happen, it can happen, somebody might become strong. But actually, Shaykh Akram said one thing which was amazing, and I, and I thought this was very, very true. He said, we are so happy about all these converts coming to Islam, right? All these converts coming to Islam, you know. By now, there must be hundreds of thousands in this country, right? He asked, just tell me one thing, where are they in the mosques? Where are the converts in the mosques? You know, you go to Fajr prayer, where are they? You go to Isha prayer, where are they? You hardly see one. If there are so many converts, if there are so many reverts who come to Islam, we get so happy and we see takbir in the mosque but we don't know that many of them leaving Islam many of them leave Islam many of them are not with Islam anymore why? because we leave them as well they understand what the Muslim community they think we sell them this, this story that you come to the Swamish Brotherhood in Islam but is there? is there Swamish Brotherhood in Islam? we say you know come to the Brotherhood of Islam Malcolm X and all this and that's why you converted is there Brotherhood in Islam? there is an Islam but is there Brotherhood in Muslims? I said this in a, in a talk just the other day I said um you know, um, uh, these, these cricketers um, in, uh, you know, in the Imam al Haqqans, they were doing some dawah to some Australian cricketers and they took them, took them to their home in, um, in, 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 this was in Pakistan, and they were talking about Islam and they said, you know, this is a very nice religion, beautiful religion. You know, what you're this religion, and we never knew. And so they, they, they walked these Australian cricketers back to their ha- hotel. So one of them, one of the Australian cricketers said, you know, he said, um, you know, you know, you, this, this, you know, You've talked about this region is so beautiful, so amazing, but we don't see its followers. Where are its followers? Where are the people who follow this religion? This is a Muslim country, Pakistan. But where are the people who do what you say? All these beautiful stories from the past. You know, these, these Sahaba used to give their, their water until the next one, and then the next one, and the next one, and the war, and then when it came back, they all died. So does that happen today? We talk about them, but we just talk. So, you know, this is very important to show Islam and not to speak Islam. So yeah, so this is the problem, you know, where are the converts? You know, where are the converts? Do we see any converts? They don't, you can't see them. It's a very big tragedy, very big tragedy. And actually what we should do, more important than getting converts to convert, is supporting converts after they've converted. Because once they've gone back, this is nifaq, this is ridda, sorry, this is ridda. And when ridda happens, it's very, very dangerous. It becomes much less of a chance that they will come back to Islam. So, you know, it's very important to have faith in these issues, not, you know, this, we shouldn't, we shouldn't follow fashions. Anything else? Yeah. The, Sorry? Where can you learn the faith of da'wah? I can know that the Qur'an, <laughs> the Qur'an is the best. The Qur'an. There, there are some books written on the faith of da'wah, but traditionally there was no, there was nothing written, written. What, I'm, what I meant by faith here, it's not, it's not a chapter usually in the books of faith, the faith of da'wah, but I've just made that <laughs> Huh? Yeah, so so the, the best way the best way is the seerah and the Quran. When you read the relate the Quran and the seerah, you'll see. You know the, the seerah is basically the sunnah living, the living sunnah, the sunnah in, in action. So to read the seerah in the light of the Quran though. And you know and to really study, study just look at the verses, compare the verses. You know, today we have a really good tool. You, know, you can just basically search the Quran with words and you can pick out similar verses. Very, very good. There are there were concordances in the indices anyway. You know, Muhammad Abdul uh, Fuad, Muhammad Abdul Baqi, he has a whole index. You can but it makes it quicker now. You know, these apps, you, know, you can find similar verses. So compare. This is part of the tadabbur of the Quran. You know, just just and the Quran, familiarity with the with the framework of the Quran and the consciousness of the Quran and the 